Right then, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about another team before IPL 2022 kicks off. And it's a brand new team talking about the Gujarat Titans. That's a name that we've got to get used to because, of course, it is this man who's going to be leading it. Talking about Hardik Pandya and there's, of course, Rashid Khan in the mix. But Hardik will be the captain of the side. Now, as usual, we'll be breaking down all the previews for you all on cricket.com. And we have the writers as well to preview it with us. Speaking of whom, we have Anirudh Suresh, who, of course, has delved deep in this team already. Anirudh, first and foremost, how are you, my friend? Yeah, thanks, Anish. I'm good. Uh, it's a bit dark out here because uh, of the you know, it's like twilight period and there is power cuts, Bangalore power cuts. But apart from that, I'm doing really good and I'm looking forward to breaking down the GT squad. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fascinating squad. We can dive straight right in because, look, like we just showed you how we're doing the Punjab one where we spoke about earlier with Somesh, we're going to break it down with Anirudh right now and get his first thoughts before we get into the squad. Now, they had a mixed auction is what I could tell from the outset. How do you kind of view their team from a neutral perspective for starters? I would say they have a very strong bowling attack. That can probably, uh, I mean, a bowling attack that is capable of probably beating anyone on any kind of wicket surface. But uh, looking at their batting, it kind of seems, yeah, it's a bit imbalanced. I would say that uh, they don't have enough experience with the bat. Yes, they have Hardik and uh, you know Miller and and guys like that who can probably talk a few towards the end. But if I look at it from top to bottom, Shuman Gill is there, but. I just see uh, a lot of inexperience, especially at the IPL level. I don't think my personal view is that they're a bit short on the batting front, but yeah. funnier things have happened in the past. So, so who knows? Like, yeah, I mean, short. it's vital that you mentioned the second point that funnier things have happened in the past because on paper, certain teams look like bankers in terms of winnability. But look, Gujarat Titans, it's about picking your pet. Right. Let's now, for the benefit of the viewers watching this, put out this squad depth that we've always done and you can catch all our analysis on the website further because Anirudh has kind of gone intrinsic on them. Now, he said one part already that they don't have proven run accumulators apart from Shubhan Gill. What else could you tell us, Anirudh, from this particular depiction? Now, we understand openers, middle order, finishers, they're kind of solid, but there, are there any other obvious weaknesses that we see with the Gujarat Titans? Yeah, so to uh, I would say they have a really good set of openers to start with the openers. So Gill, obviously, I mean, he has probably not fulfilled his potential in the IPL, but uh, he's what, 21, 22, and he has the best years ahead of him. And he already uh, already has a 450 run season next to his name. So he is one of the guys who, who can only get better from here. So he is a lock. And Matthew Wade, Kurpas, they are like excellent power play players. So, you know, they are like the perfect foil for Gil. So, if Gil can play anchor and just move along in the 120, 125, 130 strike rate with an occasional cameo. So, you will have the likes of Wade and Gurbaz just, you know, bashing it in the power play. And uh, as we saw, Gurbaz has been striking at nearly 160 in the power play in the last couple of years. And uh, that's there. The... And so I think the openers are pretty strong. So, I mean, just, just to pick your mind here, do you think Gurbaz will probably get the nod in? Do you think Wade, after that sensational World Cup that he had, how do you think Gujarat will see it? I think it will still be Wade because uh, he, he also brings a bit of leadership to the group. I mean, he has led the Tasmanian Tigers, Hobart Hurricanes, and he's 35, 36, and he's been a part of the Australian set up for like 15, so not 15, 12, 13 years now. So yeah. I think he would go and and most importantly, he provides a left-handed option because Gil is right-handed. So, and he's a keeper yeah. as well. So there's no reason to not pick Wade. That's how I see it. But I would also won't be surprised if they go both Gil and, so I'm sorry, Wade and Gurbaz at uh, one as an opener and another as a number three, because next we'll come to the middle order options. It looks a bit thin. So that's, Yeah, I mean, that's we'll come back to that chart. Now, I just want to, of course, paint a picture in terms of the best 11. Now, this is what we think in terms of cricket.com and rather you, Anirudh, in terms of the think tank. Now, you yes. mentioned Wade there and he is a perfect foil for Shubhan Gill who kind of likes to take his time at the top. But look at that middle order. Do you think it's kind of lacking in some way or the other? Because fine, there's some sort of pedigree there, but they're not all IPL proven players. Is that correct for me to say? 
I, I would totally agree that that's why I was saying that the batting is a bit thin because uh, yeah, Shankar is a domestic veteran. Miller has been playing international cricket for like 10, 12 years. Abhinav Manohar has had a good side. Mushtaq Ali, Hardik is Hardik. Rahul Devatiya and Rashid Khan provide great firepower towards the end. But if you look at it, how can you, uh, you cannot point to one player and say that, yes, this person will give me a season where he'll score 400 runs at a strike rate of 140. Or you cannot say that, yes, this person will give me 550 runs and I can be assured that he will uh, just make one position solid. That That's how I look at it, even if it's Shankar. And even with Wade, I would say that he's unproven at the IPL level. It's been almost like a decade since he last played in the IPL. And if you, even for the Australian uh, national team, if you take away his semi-final knock against Pakistan, he does not have a lot to show for as a T20I cricketer. So it's a very, it's a, I would say the management have picked more on potential than, than actual proven performers. And that's why we can say that they had a mixed auction. Although I would say that they had their draft, draft picks were great, but the auction a bit. Yeah. I mean, the key word there is potential that you mentioned. Of course, Hardik Pandya, I'm proven as a captain, but great potential as a captain to take this team to bigger heights. Let's uh, go back to that first depiction that we want to, of course, show the viewers once again. Now, you, we've spoken about the batting. How good is the bowling? Can it kind of be the paper over crack, so to speak, in terms of just balancing things up? Because there's some good names there. Mama Chabi, in terms of a power play pacer, you have Lockie Ferguson who's been exceptional uh, in the IPL in the past for KKR. Are there any other names which stand out there who, which makes other people think, you know what, Gujarat Titans have a great team here? Oh, certainly this is one bowling lineup. I, I think if I were a batting team, I would certainly fear because uh, Lockie and Rashid can bowl in all three phases and they are equally effective. They, they don't have a, a stamp next to their name that, yes, this guy is a power play specialist, this guy is a dead specialist. If you look at their numbers, they are just outstanding across all phases and they have already have had success in the IPL. So these two, they can they can run through any opposition. Shami is one name is, who is probably uh, a bit inconsistent for someone who is an India regular. He has not done justice to his potential in the IPL. But I think uh, if you use him properly, like if you don't uh, leave him too many overs at the death and use him properly in the power play and the middle overs, he can run through oppositions. When Shami gets on a roll, the format does not matter. He will run through you. And uh, these are three. And I would uh, like to mention uh, R. Sai Kishore. He is uh, a very smart pick. I think they spent uh, close to a couple of crores on him. And for Tamil Nadu, he has been like the heartbeat of TN's success in white ball cricket in the last couple of years. And if you look at his side Mushtakali numbers, they're just outstanding. And he can bowl again. He can operate in the power play. He can uh, bowl on slow and low wickets in the middle overs. And and he he gives you a very good defensive option. At the same time, he can also be a potent att attacking threat in on wickets that turn. So Sai yeah. Kishore is someone to watch out for certainly. Yeah. Yeah, Sai Kishore will be, of course. Very handy, especially the fact that they have Rashid Khan as well from the other end. Those two will be uh, licking the lips, especially on surfaces which will assist the spinners. My last question to you with regards to Gujarat, just to finish up this chat, because we've spoken about the strengths, weaknesses. We've kind of given uh, the viewers what to expect in this season for them. Now, Rashid Khan is one name which stands out. And there's another name, which is Dominic Drakes. Do you think he will fit straight in? And According to you, Anirudh, what do you think they will go in with their four foreigners? Do you think it'll be Wade, Rashid, uh, who automatically pick themselves and then the other two according to form? How do you see it? Uh, to first address Dominic Drakes, I don't think he'll get into the starting eleven because there is simply okay. not enough space because you look at Rashid and Lockie Ferguson are two locks. You need at least one more foreign opener. And uh, do you think Lord... Dominic Drakes will get in ahead of uh, Miller. I don't think they have the yeah. uh, unfortunately the Indian batting depth to take such a decision. And uh, yeah, so that is there. And uh, yeah, I think the four foreigners will be to start off with Wade, Rashid Khan, Lockie Ferguson and Miller. Uh, yeah, and there might be a slight chance of them going for both Wade and Gurbaz in the maybe midway into the season based on how uh, things go. But uh, but yeah, I think these are the four people they'll start off with. And one more uh, name I would like to say is very crucial is uh, 
Rahul Tewadi. They obviously spent nine crore, and uh, we know he's just had one good season in the IPL till now. So yeah. there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and he's crucial because say if he has a very good season with the ball, then they can probably drop Sai Kishore and add an extra batsman even or an extra Indian seamer. If he does really well uh, with the bat, that just bolsters the batting. To a whole new level because you have a number seven who can hit sixes. But at the same time, if he does not do well, then there is no like for like replacement. You can bring in Jayanti Yadav, but he does not provide the same batting depth, and uh, that becomes a problem. So a lot is resting on the shoulders of Rahul Tewadia, and it's a gamble that they have taken by paying him uh, nine crore. And uh, this this is basically you can summarize the whole transfer not not transfer auction strategy of GB in this <laughs> this one pick that. They have picked uh, nine. They have paid nine crore for Rahul Tewadia based on potential, and the whole strategy seems to be that let's let's invest on uh, potential and see uh, if we can uh, somehow make this team click. I think that has been their strategy. Yeah. So let's see. Let's wait and watch how it really unfolds for the Gujarat Titans. Hopefully, it's not a case of Gujarat Lions for them because that was awful for them. Remember all those years ago. But Anirudh, thanks so much for your time. Of course, there's plenty more previews that we need to do in Cricket.com. So. We'll catch you guys soon. Until then, subscribe. Thanks for watching this one. We're out of here.